Good evening. Good evening. Is it on? Right, there we go. Uh, the Lord's blessing to you this Lessons and Carols uh, evening service with light, uh, candlelight. Uh, at the end of the service, uh, we will be going through uh, the nine lessons and carols that are usually associated with uh, the service. Uh, and so we will begin with the invocation. We'll stand and uh, the bidding prayer and the colic for Christmas. We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God, that our Lord God would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary, and keep her perpetually on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ, and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy, so that your church, spread throughout the nations, may be defended against the adversary, and may serve you in true faith, and persevere in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all the ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, who, by whose Spirit the whole body of Christ is governed and sanctified, receive the supplication and prayers which we offer before you, for, our, for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling. To your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for catechumens, that our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of His mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that rejoicing in their new birth by water of, the, of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man, and because you have ordained for the punishment of evil do doers and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially Joseph, our President, the Congress of the United States, Anthony, our Governor, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, our Lord God Almighty, that he would deliver the world from all error, take away disease, ward off famine, Set free those in bondage, grant health to the sick, and a safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you and graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error, call them to faith in the true and living God, and His only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and gather them into His family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death, but the life of all, Hear our prayers for all who, are, who have now no right knowledge of you, 
Free them from their error, and for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as it fit, uh, is fitting for Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord, that we may serve you in true fear, to the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies, that God would remember them in mercy, and graciously grant them such things as are both needful for them and profitable for their salvation. O almighty everlasting God, through your only Son, our Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation, all our enemies be, may be led to true repentance and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and heart with us and with your whole Christian church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth, that God would send down his blessing upon them and graciously dis dispose our hearts to enjoy them according to his own good will. O Lord, Heavenly Father, by your word you created and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, in your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts, we may by your grace be made ready to receive your blessing on all the fruits on all, of all the fruits of the earth and whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into heaven, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with our first hymn. in royal David city stood a lonely cattle shed there a mother made her baby in a manger for his song Mary was that virgin Jesus Christ her little child Oh, 
our Savior holy. For he is a childhood pattern, day by day like us he grew. He was little, weak, and helpless, tears and smiles like us he knew. And he feels for all our sadness, and he shares in all our gladness. And our eyes at last shall see him, though his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. And he needs his children on to the place where he is gone. Not in that poor lowly stable with the oxen standing by shall he see him in heaven set at God's right hand on high. Then like stars, the children After mankind's fall into sin, God announced that the seed of the woman, Christ, would destroy the serpent, the Satan, and his power. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, Upon thy belly shalt go, thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
At length we pray to the bright courts of heaven and to the endless day. God promises to faithful Abraham that through his descendants and eventually through the Messiah, all the world will be blessed with salvation. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all with gladsome voice praise the God of heaven. Who to bid our hearts rejoice, His own Son hath given. To this veil of tears He comes, here to serve in sadness. That with him in heaven's fair homes we may reign in gladness. We are rich, for he was born in this, this a wonder. Therefore, 
praise God evermore, here on earth and yonder. Christ our Lord and Savior dear, be thou ever near us. Grant us now a glad new year. Amen, Jesus, hear us. The birth and the kingdom of Christ are foretold by the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The prophet foretells the glory of the small town of Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, 
whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which traveleth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel, and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide. For now shall be, he be great until the end, ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and streamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. All morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to all the earth. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his hand. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. The angel Gabriel salutes the blessed Virgin Mary. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, 
and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gabriel from heaven came with wings as drifted snow, with eyes as flame. All hail to thee, O lowly maiden Mary, most highly favored lady, glory. Blessed Mother, thou shalt be all generations, Lord, and honor thee. Thy Son shall be Emmanuel, my sins foretold, most highly favored lady, glory. Gentle Mary meekly bowed her head To me be as it pleaseth God, she said My soul shall laud and magnify God's holy name Most highly favored lady, glory Christ was born in Bethlehem all on a Christmas morn, and Christian folk throughout the world will ever say, Most highly favored lady, Lord. St. Luke gives an account of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, 
being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stars in the bright sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the hay the cattle are lowing the baby awakes but little lord jesus no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever, and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and take us to heaven to live with thee there. The angel appears to the shepherds. The angelic host breaks forth in song, and the shepherds go to the manger. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto, unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, 
thy manger is, my paradise at which my soul reclineth. For there, O Lord, doth lie the word, made flesh for us here in thy grace for thineth. He whom the sea and wind obey doth come to serve the sinner in great meekness. Thou God own Son, with us art one, dost join us and our children in our weakness. A light and grace, our guilty face, thy heavenly riches all our loss retrieving. Emmanuel, thy birth doth quell, the power of hell and Satan's bold deceiving. Thou Christian heart, who her thou art, be of good cheer and let no sorrow move thee. For God's own child, in mercy mild, joins thee to him, how greatly God must love thee. Remember thou, what glory now, the Lord prepared thee for all earthly sadness. The angel host can never boast of greater glory, greater bliss or gladness. The world may hold her wealth and gold, though thou my heart with Christ as thy true. To him hold fast, until at last, a crown be thine, and honor in full measure. The Magi are led by a star, first to Jerusalem, to the words of the prophets, and then to where Jesus is found, they bring their gifts to Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Then, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which, was, which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. 
when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding, exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As with gladness man of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light, leading onward beaming bright. So, most gracious Lord, may we evermore be led by Thee. As with joyful steps they sped, Savior to thy lowly bed, there to bend the knee before He whom heaven and earth adore. So they we with willing feet ever seek thy mercy seek. As they offered gifts most rare At thy cradle brood and bear So may we with joyful joy Pure and free from sin's alloy All our costliest treasures bring Christ to thee, our heavenly King Holy Jesus, every day keep us in the narrow way. So when things are past, bring our ransomed souls at last. Where they need no star to guide, where no clouds thy glory hide. In the heavenly country bright, need they no created light. Thou is light, its joy is crown, thou its sun which goes not down.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The angel spoke these words to men, men keeping watch over their flock by night. It was dark, cold, and silent. In the stillness, the slightest jostle of the sheep, rustle of a leaf, or snap of a twig would excite the nerves of those watchers. Their hearts would throb in their chest, their hands would sweat, and their grip on their crooks tighten. Lions, wolves, and thieves, oh my. But that night, that night, it was no lion that would consume them. It was far more terrifying. It was God's angel, one who reflected the brilliant light of God's perfect glory. It was not a pleasant sight to behold, as so many believe it was. No, it pierced them through. It pierced through the darkness that night. So bright was the glory that the shepherds' hearts nearly burst. Sinners dare not and cannot stand in the presence of God and live. His glory is too much, even when reflected by His messengers. The light of God shone on them and revealed everything, and it terrified them. For they were dead men, sinners, with nowhere to hide. Fear not. These words were their only hope of survival, their only hope of salvation. Those shepherds and their naked shame were clothed by those alien words. Like salve to a festering wound, they were treated, not with death, but life. Those simple words bear comfort that can only come from God. They are not mere words, simple words, but they are God's. And like the let there be light, they have power to accomplish exactly what they say. The shepherd's fear is removed with those words. Comfort and peace are delivered because those words forgave their sins. At the beginning of everything, there was no fear, no terror. Adam and Eve lived in perfect peace and harmony with all things. Even God talking with them face to face was a perfect joy. Every word was received as pure gift. Work was enjoyed without tears or sweat. Love was shared perfectly between all. Be fruitful and multiply was looked upon with unrestrained desire to love yet another gift from God. Their prohibition to not eat was worshipped and embraced, not as words of death, but words of life. God sustained our first parents and all things with His very word, the very word that proceeded from His most holy mouth. To hear His word was to bask in His love to bask in His unadulterated glory. It was heaven. As we heard in our first lesson, this bitterly cold night, the word that God longed to communicate and to continue, to brightly and warmly shine on His creation, it was forsaken. Forsaken by both Adam and Eve. The devil in the form of a serpent beguiled Eve, then Adam who stood idly by. With his cunning, the serpent cast shadow into man's heart. He did so by perverting, obscuring, and defiling God's word from shining purely. The let there be light was no longer alone. There was another word, a lie. Comfort and peace were promised, but it was now no longer found in God and His Word, but in men. 
In the darkness of a heart untethered from God and His Word. In the darkness, however, there was no comfort and no peace. The unknown future them terrorized every moment of their so-called life. There are now only degrees of terror. The best comfort and peace that man can attempt is to ignore and mute what terrifies. And the degrees come at how good that one sinner can do those things. Ignoring that which terrorizes us in the dark is like walking through life as in a minefield. It is never peaceful. There is never comfort. Every step taken, each day is entered. Each moment is approached with dread. Try as one might. We cannot successfully find relief. The trees and fig leaves of creation do not work. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot stop the things that go bump in the night. Our sin, our rejection of God and His Word will eventually get us all. We cannot halt death. When it, goes, when it will go off, when our next step will be our last, is unknown. But it will happen, and it will happen to all of us. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. What is impossible for man is possible for God. Adam and Eve hid themselves from God. They ran from Him. They would no longer hear His life-giving word. They would not be where He had promised to be for them. They tried to save themselves by hiding from their problem, their death. You see, simply put, they stopped going to church because that scared them more than the darkness and the unknown. For the devil lied to them, and his lie led them to believe that God, who had only ever been love, had somehow changed because of what they had done that he was no longer love, and that he would not forgive them. That somehow, he who made them in his own image to live and receive from him everything, now hated them. Yet to them, to them, God came walking. His glory sought them out. Yes, He would reveal what they had done. Yes, He would show them clearly what destroyed it all and that they were the only ones to blame. And, they were, and there was nothing they could do to fix it. He would show them that they were damned by their sins. Death truly came. Death became them. And because of what became them, death has now become us as well. We are our first parents' children, after all. Their sin is now ours. There is no hope in us either. But we must not believe the lie of the serpent that they believed. We must not run to the trees and the leaves. For God has never changed. He is love. And perfect love drives out all fear. Because you have done this, serpent, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. The God of love is never, the God of love never ceases to be. No sinner, and their sin changes that. There is no, there is no one that God does not love. He desires that all be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He longs that all believe 
that peace and joy, that salvation is not earned or paid for by those in need of saving, he would that all repent and turn from themselves toward their only hope, the seed of the woman, the son of Mary, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Word made flesh, the very let there be light that created all things, has taken on flesh and dwelt among us. The glory of God, which no sinner can behold, now is mysteriously joined to man in the person of Jesus. He is perfect God and perfect man. In Him, what is impossible for man is done by God as a man. God comes not to collect, not to condemn, but to redeem, to pay the debt of death that no one else could pay. The babe, wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger, entered this world, this minefield, for all mankind, in order to save them, to take the blows himself in our place. He came to be the Savior of all. Yes, He took on flesh in the womb of Mary to enter into your minefields as you. He wants you alive and will do everything it takes that you receive that life, even if it means bruising His heel in the cross of Calvary to do it. For Jesus, born in Bethlehem, came to walk in your darkness and to do it with you, as you. He came to seek you out, to call you to himself. Where are you? For he wishes to embrace you, to love you, and to take your sin as his own, to bear your burden. So hide no more in the dark behind the trees. He wants you. He wants your sin. He wants your death. The, babe, the baby came for this one reason, this one reason only, for you, your sin and your death, because that's the only way that you fear not. Sin, death, and the devil must be destroyed, finished, for fear not to be possible. Jesus, in all His glory, is the only one who can and has accomplished such a victory. The babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, anointed with the blood and water of birth, and laid in a manger, was born to be wrapped in the shroud of death, anointed with the blood and water of His perfect sacrifice, and then laid in a tomb. That tomb, the earth from which Adam was created and to which he returned, would be the womb of new everlasting life. For you see, Jesus is not dead, but alive. Death is no more. He has defeated it. For those who believe and are baptized, who are buried and resurrected with Jesus, the darkness of death is nothing to fear because Jesus, the light of the world, has entered it with His glorious light and blown it up. The grave could not contain Him because He had destroyed sin. He had paid for its debt. Death was no more. Believe it and receive it. This night, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus was born for you. He has made you His in baptism. He has taken on flesh to be your substitute. Where you fail, where sin robs you of peace and drives you to great shame and vice, He calls to you, calls you to let Him be what He was born to be, your Savior, your Savior from sin, death, and the power of the devil. 
He wants nothing more than for you to have peace, joy, comfort, and to fear not. And so He does it all for you. He gives Himself into death for you. Believe it, for that is why He came. Yes, He forgives you all your sins. What good tidings of great joy indeed. God loves you and gave you Jesus the Savior, born in Bethlehem. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. amen. St. John unfolds the mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was, the life, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the, light of, was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
of the Father's love begotten, and the world began to be. He is Alpha and Omega, He the source, the ending, He of the things that are, that have been, and that future you shall see evermore and in concert ring evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father and O Holy Ghost to thee him and chant and high thanksgiving and unending praises be honor and and dominion and eternal victory evermore and evermore Amen From the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flock by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Ages leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. See the great design of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching God in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending, in his temple shall appear. 
come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. All creation join in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son. Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal three in one. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Stille nacht, heilige nacht, alles schlaft, einsam wacht, nur das Traute hat heilige Pacht, hol de Knab im Lach, ja. Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, divine service tomorrow morning for the Christmas morning will be at 9 a.m. All are welcome to come for the Lord's Supper uh, that, at that time. Drive safely, and may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless. Christmas. Oh. You want to help hand these out? Can you hand these out to the little kids? No, just just grab the bags and give them to people. Give them to 
There you go. You can do that. Oh, Merry, oh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yes, you. help hand out the bags, please. <laughs> help, help. help. Morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.